Okay, got it. And let's go, let's meet your peer. Okay, so we're gonna go through the parts fairly quick because hopefully you guys know what these are. Um, but I'm gonna kind of give you my version of it because, um, and David, feel free to jump into if you want to, but our hope is to go through the different parts and then, and then really truly let's just start juicing. So the first piece, we've got the juicer all set up. I've got it plugged in, I've got the grids, I've got my tools, um, I've got bowls, I've got strainers, I've got cloths, um, and we've got the feed tube. So let's go ahead and first take this off. Oh. Okay, so this is the feed tube, comes with the top, and I'm just gonna keep this on for easy purposes. When we pull out, this is the grid tray and the grid that's in here. Today I have a size 10. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out right now. And then let me go ahead and get the cutter. So cutters, the cutter is really interesting. So the cutter should typically slip right onto, um, on, right onto the juicer. If for any reason it doesn't, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's not slipping on very easy. Maybe it just gets stuck like right here. Um, I am just going to gently put it on and then I'm gonna wiggle it. I'm gonna wiggle the cutter so it just goes right on. So wiggling the cutter um, works really slick and it should slide right onto the juicer. Um, if for any reason it doesn't slide onto the juicer, just grab a little bit of water, put it on your pinky. And then what, what I did is I just kind of put a little bit of water on the inside that coats it just enough to be able to slip right back on. Okay. Um, and then the feed tube, I'm just going to go ahead and pop that on. Um, so again, see how there's a lever here. We're just going to push that, pop it on and off. One of the things that David did for safety purposes is this, this feed tube needs to be on at all times before this juicer ever turns on. If for any reason you can't turn the juicer on or you try and turn it on and you can't figure out what is wrong, um, make sure that the feed tube is snapped fully in place. You don't need the cutter in order for it to run, but you do need the feed tube on here. Okay, so then we've got the press tray. This one is really important. So one of the biggest um, challenges people have when they get the juicer is sometimes the tray will be a little bit out of balance and it will go up. So we wanna make sure that this, that, that this tray is securely and in the right spot for the press plate. So let's look at the press plate and I'm just gonna move this a little bit so you guys have a better view because this is about the juicer and you guys, not so much about me. So the press plate is fantastic. It is all stainless steel, custom made parts and designed to be able to withstand two and a half tons of pressure. This guy right here, this is going to attach onto the side of the juicer that ensures that the pressure is gonna go into the right place. And it just slides right in, okay? If for any reason, and this happens to me sometimes, if you're pressing and you're pressing so much that it pops onto the side so it's not on the track on the side of the juicer. Just lift it up, get it back on track and put it down. So you don't want to use the juicer when it's not on track. You always want to make sure it is. And that way the press plates will be securely set up. Okay, so that is the juicer. Let's go into actually one more piece is um, is the press. So we have a lever on the side and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this piece a lot. This lever right here, can you see that? I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit. Um, this lever is gonna be your very, very best friend for as long as for forever, because this juicer lasts forever. This allows you to control the speed of the press. It allows you to control the flow of the juice. And it allows you to go full steam for two and a half tons of pressure as well as a softer press, okay? So we're gonna use that a lot today, but just know that everything that you do can be controlled by this lever right here. So nothing should ever spray or get out of control um, unless you leave it alone and let it do its thing on its own. Um, then you're kind of on your own and then, then who knows what's, what's gonna happen. So we always like to be in control of that of that lever and make sure that we go nice and slow on that, especially if we're doing anything new, if, especially if we are um, doing anything very juicy. So things like that. So Chandra, I'm gonna just check in with you. Um, are there any questions or anything that you'd like 
me to address before I go into, oh yeah, before I go into the rest of the accessories? No, I think that looks, that looks good. Tell us what All you're right. gonna use alongside of it. All right. All right, so I have cloths here today. Um, I do have some bags, but I will primarily use cloths. Um, these are slightly used cloths, but this is a perfect example of how these cloths can be used up to 200 times, okay? So, um, so I just will show you how to wash them off um, and we'll show you how to store them, but we're gonna use cloths today. We're also going to use the grids, which we've talked about. So there's anything from two up to 12. Um, we're gonna use the 10, we're gonna use the 12. Um, we could use something, depending on the timing, we could use some other ones too, um, because you can use these for making ice cream, which ice cream is like basically frozen fruits and vegetables. It's great for making nut butters. It's great for softer fruits and vegetables. Um, so there's a large variety and this is all in your manual and there's a guide that will tell you exactly what each one is for. Um, another great resource, oh, hello. Another great resource is our YouTube channel. Um, it goes through all of the how to's on how to use the juicer and it walks through every single grid and what you can use them for. Okay, so we've got grids. We've got the grid tray. Um, I'm gonna set this up right now since I like to be a little bit prepared. I'm gonna put in the number 12 here for when we get started juicing. Um, what other accessories? So we're gonna use a bowl, we're gonna use a pitcher. Um, for anyone that has received the starter kit or if anyone has ordered the starter kit, um, it comes with all of our favorite things besides knives um, and maybe a spatula. But um, it comes with a lot of our favorite things including a bowl. It also has a pitcher, which I have a pitcher right here. It comes with a scoop. So there's two different ways that we'll show you how to juice today. One is sort of a speed juicing and the other, actually three ways really, a speed juicing, another where you put all of the mash into a bowl and use this amazing one and a half cup scoop. Um, and then also with a strainer and a bowl. So um, I love the fine strainers. We have both a large and a small in the starter kit. This one is great for um, a folding tray. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll get to that, great. Um, and then we also have two different strainers. So um, I like for prepping. So I, there was a question about prepping um, and getting help on prepping. So one of the things that we um, included in the starter kit, and you can use any kind of cookie tray, lasagna tray. Um, you certainly don't have to buy the stuff that we have, but we did design it in case you wanted it all in one place. Let's see, we've got this great large cookie tray. Um, it's out of bamboo. And what I like to do is just prep everything and then put it on here and then it's ready to go. Um, I also have the bowl, which I like to call sort of a speed bowl. And if anybody joined us in the live that we did, I used this bowl for uh, ginger, turmeric, lemon, orange juice shots. And as you can see, um, the turmeric will be with us forever. I forgot, it's, it lasts forever, but I kind of love it. It kind of is artistic. It kind of makes me feel like it's well loved. So, um, so this I like to use for both speed juicing and full prep. So any other accessories that I might be missing, Chandra, that you want to cover? Oh, no, I'll mention it if I see it as you're juicing. Yeah, the chopstick will come in handy. You'll see me how to use that as well. Um, great, are there any questions in the chat that I should address before we get into the next piece? No questions right now. Awesome. Um, okay, we'll get into the class when we do the cleaner. Um, there's one other accessory that is for citrus. It's a citrus peeler that's on our website, um, but we're gonna do everything here today without using a peeler. Um, I know you just invested in a, in a beautiful stainless steel juicer. So um, know it's available if you want it, but you can also easily use this juicer without it. Okay, so let's meet the press. Okay, so we're gonna meet the press today. We're gonna to do lemons and oranges first. So if you want to juice along with me, go ahead and grab your oranges and lemons and let's get started. Let's get juicing. So I'm gonna move you over here and I'm just gonna, we're gonna focus down here onto the prep tray, okay? 
Chandra, can you see that okay? Yep, looks good. Okay, great. So lemons, lemons are first. So in order to do lemons, what I like to make sure that I have are cloths. So we'll get two cloths. We're going to have liners. So liners are great for any citrus um, and also things that are kind of sticky like berries. Spinach is sticky. Um, kale is not sticky, but spinach is sticky. Um, so these liners are gonna be great. What the liners do is they basically keep all of the pulp in place and it just makes the cleanup that much easier. Cloths can be used two to 300 times. Liners can only be used once and liners must be used with a cloth or a bag. You only have to do that once, but hopefully you don't ever have to do it because it will be a mess. So the liners are always used with a cloth or bag. Okay, so lemons. I love making lemons. Um, somebody was asking before we got started, um, how, like when, when, when can I juice? When do I have time to juice? That is one of the biggest challenges. I have the same challenge, right? So we all do, time is precious but we all wanna be healthy. So lemons are just amazing. First of all, we call them the duct tape of all juices. You can throw it into just anything and it always tastes better, um, but it's also fantastic first thing in the morning. So maybe you don't have time for juicing, but you might have time to press a lemon. Let's say somebody came home sick with a sore throat and you wanted to make hot lemon and honey. Um, but also one great time saver tip is to be able to make juice cubes. And what you do is you put this into a juice tray. So I got a fun one here. Um, and you can fill those up with lemon juice and you can put them in the freezer and then you can save them for the morning or to add to juice or to add even to sparkling water or something like that. Okay, sorry, tangent, lemon. So we're gonna cut this into a fan, okay? So I've got my knife here, can you see? Let me lower it down a little bit. All right. So we're just gonna fan this. We're not peeling it. Everything is clean. Everything that you can get that's organic is, you know, you always wanna get organic when you can. Okay, so I cut them into sort of a fan. The next thing I'm gonna do is just kind of cut it right down the center. Okay, so now you've got a nice easy thing for you to press. So I'm gonna do two to three more depending on how it fits. So you can get more than one lemon into this press. Uh, you may as well uh, get your money's worth here. And it is just smelling so good over here right now. Um, is anybody juicing? Throw it in the chat. I mean, I guess you're juicing. So, but if you can throw it in the chat so I know if you're juicing with me and I can guide you a little bit. But I have four lemons. Okay, so now we're going to wrap up the liner first. So I do corner to corner, corner to corner. I flip it over. You don't have to, but I like to. It just feels like it's more secure to me. And then when I wrap the claws for people who are new here, we're just wrapping them, as David calls it, in a tic-tac-toe sort of form, okay? So this is one. I'm gonna put this in the press tray. I'm gonna just do one more so you guys can see it really fast. And then we'll do some oranges um, so that you can see what that's like. And then we'll get pressing. So again, I'm cutting these into a fan. So quiet, I should have had music on or something. So lemons are just amazing. I, and they're in season right now. Um, so they're inexpensive. It's just a perfect time to freeze. We do have some studies that say that juices last for up to 30 days. And I'll get to the actual juicing of the, or freezing the juices themselves. Um, but we've also got some studies that say that these will last up to four months. So four months is a nice long time to be able to have juice sort of at the ready, especially for busy folks. Okay, so here's my lemons. Let's go ahead and prep the oranges. So oranges are really easy. Um, and these are, oh my gosh, I don't know how luck, I got so lucky I found organic navel oranges. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. 
and I'm going to take part of the peel up. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And David, you can jump in if you want to add any comments on that piece. But then from here, I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut one, two, three, four. So just a tic-tac-toe again. I guess we like tic-tac-toe. And then the same thing here. Again, the peeler works really well um, and it's super fun. And it's a, we've been using some of our orange peel for cleaner. We've been using the orange peel for pot pot potpourri. Um, but those are sort of the two main things. We like to compost it. We've got gardeners that like to use it and put it into their compost as well. Um, so those, those are some of the fun uses for pulp. <clears throat> and we'll kind of talk about some fun things you can do with the other pulps that we're gonna make too. So I'm gonna just do one more after this and then we can kind of start pressing. And I'm gonna use a liner and a cloth for these as well. Again, citrus needs to have a liner and a cloth or bag. Um, it just makes the cleanup a lot easier and it makes it fun because we all deserve to have fun while we're being healthy. Again, see here. So this one's pretty small. This orange is pretty small. So I am actually not doing the full tic-tac-toe. I mean, that's another thing about juicing and life and cooking is that these are all guides for you. And we really more than anything want to build confidence in your experience with juicing so that you kind of know what to expect with your juicer. And then you can be creative and start to do your own creations. Um, but so we're just trying to show you sort of the tools that are available and then you can put together your own masterpieces. All right. So I'm getting crazy. I'm just putting them all together. Um, you, you can see that, right, Chandra? Yep, we can see it. All right. Am I missing anything so far? No, David made a comment that he likes to, to, to peel three oranges and leave one peel on one orange to give a oh. little bit of a slightly bitter taste. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, you know, we just did a live with Dr. William Lee and we were talking about pomegranate. And what he said is that he actually wants us to juice with the pomegranate on the outside, like the peel, keep the peel because there's elagitanins in it. And um, there's elagitanins inside the pomegranate as well, but there's even more on the peel. Some people are sensitive, their stomachs are sensitive to it, but um, we need to do more on peels because there's so many nutrients, the watermelon rind, um, the pumpkin rind. <clears throat> there's just so much to do, so much to learn, so much to juice. Okay, so here we go. Let's um, turn it on. I've got one lemon stacked here. And I'm also going to set this up kind of on the side so you can see me use the lever, okay? I could probably, I don't know if I can fit two in there. I'm gonna try it. I guess again. I've got my pitcher in place. Nice and wide pitchers are really recommended. Um, it'll capture all the juice. And now I'm gonna go all the way to the very top. So I'm at full speed right now until I start to see the break. Here, I'm gonna slow it down, okay? This way I know everything is going on the sides. Everything's going in here to the picture that I want. And by then I just turn it full speed. For people who are um, wondering some time savers, this is a great opportunity to look at that. So I'm gonna do the rest of the oranges. And maybe I'll do what David says. I'll keep one with the rind on.
see while this is going there's a lot of other things that you can do um one thing that you can do especially if you're grinding and we'll do this with the pineapple is you can actually grind the ginger while we're pressing the pineapple okay so now we're getting close for this juice stream to break and honestly if you're going to press it more than once i found that you really don't have to wait for the stream to break because you're gonna press it again. So what I like to do from here is I like to fold and fold and get every last ounce of juice from this. Great. So we're making great progress. We're almost done with the press. You do not need to grind lemons, grapefruit, oranges. You also do not need to grind pineapple, cantaloupe, pomegranates. You have a choice with grapes if you want to or not. I like to grind grapes because I like to get into the fiber of the peel. But you do not have to. And what else can you grind? You know, I've seen people do apples and stuff without without using the grinder. But again, there's there's a lot of really delicious stuff in all of these produce. So I would just stick with the citrus, the pineapple, and a few other things. Okay, let's get to oranges. So again, the beauty of this is that while I've got this one pressing, so we're gonna do oranges and lemons together. While I'm doing that, I can prep for the next pieces. I did not slow the press, but I knew that it was gonna be okay. So you just know that Always slow the press until you know for sure that you've done something and you know how it works um, before you trust that or live with the consequences. So that's always possible too. Could be worth saying. All right. So here are the lemons. The liners are compostable. So you can just throw this whole thing into the compost. Depending on time, I might throw this in here. I am. Okay, so while this is going, I just want to show you sometimes if you want um, to get every every last ounce and maybe get into more of that brine. Here's some lemons. Here's all of the eight lemons. And again, you'll see there is there is more juice. I'm gonna reuse this cloth. So I'm gonna reuse the cloth um, that has lemons in it. I am not going to reuse the liner. So new liners for every new press. Pretty good. I think I'll leave this put these poor lemons alone. The oranges. And these were the oranges that were already pressed, but I'm gonna go ahead and just fold them and sneak them in here so we have a bit of a double decker. All right, so if there's any questions about lemons or oranges or grapefruits. Let me know. Chandra, I'm so glad you're here. It sounds like there's some questions about the juice sounds. Yeah, they just can't hear the juicer being turned on. And I think that has to do with your microphone. Being, oh, yeah. It's, it's hard on. to hear. Yeah. Can you they hear me okay? 
We can hear you now. We can hear the juicer, but I think your head, your microphone cancels out the sound of the juicer. Perfect. More of me. Yeah. All right. So last press. And then let me just make sure I'm following along. I have everything organized so we can get to some stuff. And if we do have time, always keep your fingers out of there once it gets close. Um, if we do have time, I have some pomegranates, some cranberries, and things like that we can play with. All right, so we're good with juice, um, juicing the uh, lemons and oranges. The next thing we're gonna do is celery and cucumber. So celery and cucumber, very, very juicy, super juicy vegetables. I guess you could call them fruits too. Um, so these are really fun. They are gonna require a strainer and a bowl. Um, Chandra, do you know, is anyone else, uh, how long can I turn the juicer on continuously? David, do you want to answer that? I mean, I have never had to turn it off, but I know that you, or Chandra, do you want to answer that? I'll let David answer that one. He, he knows exactly how long it can run. Let me see. I might have to unmute him. Hold on one second. I want to unmute him. Hey, Tom, any chance you can unmute him? I, I tried. I have to ask him to unmute, and uh, he has to do it himself. If, uh, Got it. So while he's doing that, let me there just... There he goes. Got it. There he is. Vidya, your machine can run continuously, even if it gets warm, no damage is occurring. So the pure can just be run really for hours, as long as you'd like. That's awesome. Okay. Sometimes if you're juicing things that will get warm, um, like sometimes greens. Greens, if you find that it's getting warmer, than normal, you can run some cold water through the feed tube um, and the sides get hot. Um, yeah, I'll let, I'll let Chandra and David answer those questions. Yeah. They're I mean, better. Yeah, I can speak to it a little bit. So if, if you're juicing, say for an hour, the motor is running, the oil is running through the pump and the whole system continuously and the uh, and everything is getting warm over time. So there's, there's really two questions regarding the heat. There's one, will the heat damage or affect the machine? And the answer to that is no, not at all. The, the machine could get quite warm and still there would be no damage. Um, and then the other question is, is the machine is heated up and now I'm noticing that uh, my pulp is getting a little warm because the cutter's a little warm and the machine's a little warm. And the answer on that is, is that enzymes become negatively or enzymes become more active over 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, the, the general consensus is that you want to keep your pulp cool. Uh, I'm going to say under 100 degrees. And I know that that sounds really high. Uh, and we need to have a little more science around this because when pulp is warm, what it really does is it increases the enzymatic reactions. It doesn't mean that the juice, that it's oxidizing or anything bad is happening. It just means that the, the chemical process of the enzymes uh, transitioning to what they become over time um, has accelerated. So uh, people tend to wanna have the coolest pulp possible, but I would say as long as your pulp is under hundred degrees Fahrenheit, you're really fine. Okay, so we're on to the next. We're on to celery and cucumber. For anyone who is juicing along with me, make sure you have your bowl and your strainer. So I'm gonna use the new Pure Bowl strainer. Celery, celery and cucumber are super, super easy to prep. This is unlike the other juicers that you may have had in the past. Um, you're basically just putting the full piece of produce through. So you'll just chop the ends off, but you need a strainer and a bowl. Um, 
for the soap. Oh yeah, so sorry, that's what I was doing. I was cleaning the cloths. I did not use soap. No, I did not. You can if you want to, um, but I just used a brush and scrubbed them clean and I will let them dry for just a couple minutes and then I'll fold them up and store them in the freezer. So I'll show you how I wrap them up um, in just a couple minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean off my space for just a second and I'm gonna put you back down to the prep table and we're gonna prep. So I'm gonna show you the celery is already prepped. I basically took the ends off. Um, I don't think I took the tops off. So here's, I'm gonna just take the tops off. I couldn't find celery with leaves on it for some reason. So um, I normally will just juice the leaves as well, but they didn't have any on there. For the cucumbers, these are just some English cucumbers. They're nice and long and thin. Um, they're prepped. So, um, so these are ready to go. And I'm using the number 12. Number 12 is really important to use for celery. So celery, um, you might find that celery is a little bit um, fibrous and putting the full through doesn't work. You can always chop them into smaller pieces. It does take a little bit longer. Um, but this process is, is really, really quite fast. Um, so I have two cucumbers, I have a bunch of celery, and I have probably two cloths that I'll need. And for this, I'm gonna use this, um, this bowl that we have, and I'm just gonna keep them in, in here. And so they'll be ready for me to just plop them on there. In fact, let me just clean up my workspace so that you all can see. I have my little grate. And then I'm gonna put this here because you'll see just how fast this stuff goes through. Okay, so then I'm gonna have my pusher here too. One thing that I've noticed for people that are doing videos is that they are um, trying to use the pusher really high up here. And what I suggest and what you'll see me do is I push everything down until I've got about one, one phalange, one, one part of my finger um, in, into the feed tube. The, the, the cutter is quite a ways down. So it's gonna be a lot easier for you to juice doing in that way. And I'm gonna show you exactly how. Two to three. Mostly down. That makes it much easier for me to use the pusher. Very, very slight. So I'm cleaning the grid tray by just pulling this back and forth. And what that does is it just sort of loosens what's in in here and pops it right in the screen. Okay, so this is what the celery juice looks like. And I'm gonna move this down so you can see. So basically we've got the same style of cloth folding that we did before. So I'm gonna get both of these cucumbers done. David has an amazing video on how to do this juice. Um, and he uses the juice to actually clean the feed tube. Um, that is a great technique to use. I am not gonna do that today, but I want to make sure you know that it is available on our YouTube channel. And it is a great one to see how he does it because it's a, it's a really fun technique. Um, I'm going to use this chopstick too. And this is just going to move some of the extra celery out of the way. And then I just switched over to a number 10 grid. You can do that whenever you want. You can change the grid number or the grid tray whenever, grid whenever you want. So I'm taking the whole cucumber and let's get you nice and close. So you can kind of see there's one piece that I want you to know happens. So if you push too fast, you're gonna shoot the cucumber up out of the feed tube. So you just wanna take your time. This is, we're, this is not a race today. So if I move it fast, I'll try and create what I'm trying to say. You can see that, it's still fine. Just pull it out. 
and push it through. Either way. And no need to rush. All right. So I'm going to put all of this. This is about a cup and a half. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. This is a process that I use for all juicing. Um, so again, David has a great technique if you're just juicing celery and cucumber. Today, I just want to give you the tools to be able to use this for anything that you're juicing. This is how I do it. So I basically juiced everything. This is the last cloth that I'm gonna fill. So I wanna get all of the pulp that is in the feed tube into this cloth. I'm gonna snap, pop this off because it's so easy. There is some pulp in here. And then I'm just going to rinse I'm gonna grab the extras from the feed tube. All right, then I'm just gonna pop that on. It isn't a lot, but you know, when you know that it's in there and then you know that it could be in your body doing you good, you just, I don't know, I just always do it. Okay, so then it's in, a, in the center. So let's make sure you can see this. This is pretty much in the center. We don't want to try and just fold it really fast. Folding it really fast, could lead to trouble. So you wanna make sure that it's in the center so that your two and a half tons of pressure is going in the right place. All right, so now we've got a clean pitcher. I'm gonna take the strainer off. I am going to pour the extra juice, which is quite a bit. I'm gonna pour that into the pitcher and then we're gonna press. And again, for these, you always want to control the speed of the press. So we're turning the juicer on. And we're gonna press. I've slowed it down and now I'm gonna speed up. So as you get used to juicing, you'll be able to really feel the rhythm of it. I certainly have things come out on the back end sometimes, and that's, that's okay. You just pull it out, put it back into the cloth, wrap it up and press it. This looks really, really good though. All right, so while this is going on, I want to, again, remind you guys, this is a great time to be able to clean up. It's a great time to prepare for the next juice. Um, it's a great time to do whatever you want. So, um, so while this is pressing, I'm just going to rinse off the top of the feed tube and wipe down, clean up the grid trays and get ready for our next juice. Oh, it's, it happened so fast. Hold on a second. Again, we're always gonna press twice. What David likes us to do is alternate the folds. And always keep your fingers safe, especially keep your kids' fingers safe. Jen, we do have a few questions. Great. While that's pressing, lay mommy. Okay, so somebody asked, when you put the feed tube back, it hits the cutter, does that dull the cutter? Does that dull it? Um, what that, it, it won't as long as it's not running. So one thing you wanna do is if you're turning it on or off, make sure that the cutter has completely stopped and then, and then it should not be, should not be hitting it if that makes sense. Yeah, we do have a video um, to help you tighten your cutter. If it's loose, um, we can send you that video so you can email into the support. And then the tool we'll that say, you're you. I will say from my experience, I have never had to tighten the cutter. So just know that that's, I would say that's pretty rare, wouldn't you Chandra? Yeah, we don't want you messing around with your cutter. Um, it usually comes preset to your juicer. If you are having any issues with your cutter, definitely email in at support at purejuicer.com and we will help you uh, fix your cutter once and for all so that you don't really have to do anything to your cutter. 
Um, and then the tool that you're using, can you just show them? And then are we gonna, the, the chopstick? Yeah. So it's a little chopstick that she's using. Tom, Tom asked that question. Yeah. Um, do we need yeah. to peel the skin when juicing kiwi? What is your recommendation? I have heard you do not have to. You can just juice the whole thing. But kiwi, okay, so if I'm juicing kiwi, the first thing I do is I grab probably a size eight grid. Um, and that is, that's something, and, and hopefully we'll get to something that wants to pop out because that's been an issue or a question for people is, you want to make sure that you cover that feed tube when you're putting the kiwi in, or you put the kiwi into the feed tube while the machine is off and then turn it on. And that is a great way to get those through. Anything else? Um, yeah, there's one, um, Denise is, uh, is um, saying that when she, when she presses too quickly, the juice splatters on the back and the sides. And she se says, you seem to be pressing fast. Um, but the, the thing with that, Denise, is, is, is how much you're filling your cloths, making sure that your cloths are proper, properly placed. And sometimes you'll see that the cloths bulge a little bit out um, when you're pressing, and that's what's sort of squirting. So if you can tighten up the fold a little bit, believe it or not, it stays, um, it's st the, the, the juice will press into the tray a little bit better. And then for me, sometimes who's really on the go and quick and fast, I have a little cheat that I do sometimes when I know I'm gonna be juicing a lot or I'm in a hurry and I don't wanna fold my clothes, cloths properly. I actually take a, a dish towel and drape it on the back and the sides on the top of my juicer so that if I do by mistake not get the, the press exactly right, it will spray the cloth that is draped over my juicer um, instead of my walls. So the one thing that I've seen, a couple of people have done some fabulous videos. I love watching videos from our, um, from our pure juicers. The one thing that I've noticed though, is sometimes people don't wrap the cloths snug enough. So you think about, you think about a baby diaper and you think about, you know, you need to make sure that thing is nice and snug and it's wrapped all the way around that bottom. Um, that's very true for the mash as well. So make sure that that's nice and snug and also make sure that it is small enough. So the square that you create, and this is really important, especially I've noticed this with things shooting out the back because I've certainly done it. So you're not alone. Um, is that you want to make sure that the square is small enough to fit on this tray. You don't want it so that it's barely touching. You don't want it so big that it covers the whole thing because what's going to happen is when it starts to press is it's going to press into the area where the juice is supposed to flow. So when you're doing your folding and wrapping, just make sure it's nice and snug enough. Um, wrap like a cute little baby bottom um, onto this tray and then the juice will get pressed and it will flow through this direction. If for any reason, you know, you're pressing and realizing you didn't do that, just unload, just take, pull the tray down refold it, put it in there and try it again. Okay, so now I've got, this is celery and cucumber. I am not planning this. This is actually working really great. So four cups a quart for both. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the next one, um, which is greens and apple. And this one is gonna be I'm not going to juice as much because I want to make sure that we have enough time, but we're doing well. We're at 2.50. We're going to use some lost amount of kale, which I'm going to use one bunch. And then what I like to do for prepping kale is just take the ends off. You do not need to take off the stems. Do not take stems off. I know that a lot of juicers require that. We do not. We do not. I mean, we can't do sugar cane, but we can do we can do we can do lost tomato kale easily. Um, pulp, you guys know what this stuff is like. Uh, and then apples. So I'm going to do two apples. And apples, you can prep and keep, either keep the seeds or not. That's kind of your choice. If you're going to eat forty apples in a day, juicing wise, you may not want to do 
this, but for me, I rarely take the seeds out. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, that's your business. So, okay, so this is basically prepped. Um, I'm gonna do speed juicing on this. And when I say speed juicing, I'm basically going to put a cloth down. <clears throat> I'll probably put two down just as a backup. And I'm going to use my speed bowl. A lasagna tray works great. I have wide sort of soup bowls that work great. Uh, and I don't need a liner. I can absolutely reuse the cloths that I just used um, because I don't mind the flavor of celery and cucumber. Um, these basically just need to be thin enough to be able to get through the feed tube. So as long as they get through there, that's fine. Okay, so I've got my apples, I've got my kale, and then what you'll see me do is I'm gonna take two kale leaves, fold them up, I'm gonna push them down, down till they get about here, and then I'll push it through. What I like to do is alternate with apples. If you don't wanna use apples, you certainly don't have to. Um, and this is your chance to be able to <clears throat> really see how powerful this machine is, especially if you have a little angst during the day, you can really use the, um, the pusher and you can knock that stuff through. So I'm gonna show you that you can not be afraid to use this juicer. This is really beautifully designed and it's so fun to have you on here, David. Okay, so here's the greens. Let me make sure I have my pusher. I find alternating <clears throat> a great way to go. David knows how much that brings me joy. So this is such a beautiful mash. There you go, this apple really helps. When I feel like things are slowing down a little bit, I'll just kind of move the grid tray back and forth and that will help with it and it does. Two more apples. All right, so that's how we do the mash there. I find that kale is phenomenal to juice. Um, I just juiced a bunch of stuff um, last weekend over Thanksgiving and I juiced a bunch of shard. I will say that is not, it's probably my least favorite thing I've ever juiced, um, but kale, I don't care if it's lacinato or green kale, um, that plus apple, there is something magical about that. I just love it so, so much. Um, so I only ended up using one clock for this. Again, I'm gonna take this off. The cutter has stopped. So there's no risk of that hitting the feed tube. I'm gonna pop this back on. I'm gonna fold her up. So let's make sure you can see how I'm folding this up just to see if this is how you do it um, in hopes that, in hopes that you don't have anything coming out the backs. So see how I just kind of molded it into a square And I'm going to make sure everything is nice and flat. And there's juice down here. I'm just going to lift this up, pop it in here, and put this in my pitcher. And I'm going to turn it on. And one thing I want to show you while this is pressing is I am going to rinse out the feed tube. You saw me do it just a minute ago, but this is my quick way of, of washing the feed tube and the cutter while I'm in between juices, okay? Because I think we have at least two more 
um, which we'll totally be able to do. We've got more than enough time, but here we go. Let's do the press. And this one I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna make sure this one goes nice and slow. Fold this underneath. I'm gonna grab some water. So the beauty of this is that you can really do two things at once. This is fine. This is, you don't have to watch that. So that's doing that. I'm just gonna rinse a couple of things and get ready for our pineapple. Are there any more questions? Um, let's see. So somebody asked what blade they should use for ginger and turmeric. And I, I yep. and I, I suggested the straight blade. The straight cutter would be a good one for that. Absolutely. And then Denise is um talking is is thankful for the speed juicing since she's on the Gerson therapy. And oh. um and this is good that you showed her how to clean in between the juices. Um, and so I, I, you know, she, I pointed out that you removed the grid tray and that you dumped the water through the feed tube to actually with the, with the juicer on so that it's actually cleaning all of that. And then you can just walk away and uh, wait your hour and do your next juice without having to do really do anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, and again, it's stainless steel, which is great. Um, when you're done, you have a couple of options as you can rinse things with hot soapy water, or even if at the end of the night for Gerson, you can throw it all in the dishwasher and it'll do itself for you. I mean, you would want to rinse it out a little bit, but all the parts are safe. I have dishwashed even the cutter and the cutter turns out beautifully. So two really good options. So I'm just going to clean up my workspace again just a little bit and again it's it's just mainly the stuff that I'm cleaning up is I have to throw a couple things in the compost I'll clean up the knife we're gonna do, get ready to do ginger turmeric very little prep is required um, I got a little crazy with cleaning up the feed too but that's fine I'm just gonna rinse the grid tray um, what do I want to say about greens? So greens for people who are storing in the fridge. Here's a couple time saver tips. Um, greens really last about a day, 24 hours in the refrigerator. I have found that when you store them um, and you store them so that the juice is all the way to the very, very top, the flavor stays, it maintains, and it's still delicious for at least a full 24 hours. If you only have time to juice every couple of days. Um, we have a fantastic juicer, Conrad, who introduced us to freezing juices. So what he does is every other week, he juices massive quantities. He puts everything into glass jars. He fills it not all the way to the top. He leaves enough space for the juice to expand and then he puts it in the freezer and then he has juice for the next two weeks. He takes it out the night before, he lets it thaw, and then he has his juice in the morning. So that's a great, great way to get your green juice without having to juice it every day. Um, another option is the juice cubes. So my household, I have a son who loves carrot apple juice and he does like greens, but what I like to do is juice the carrot apple juice and have it last for three days. So that's kind of my time saver. And then I have green juice that I've made and I'll put it into juice cubes and I will drop them in in the morning and then he can have greens every day with that juice. Um, trusting that it'll still be fresh, trusting that the enzymes are still there. Uh, and then for me, I like 
lemon and um, ginger in mine as well. And he does not. So it gives me the chance to be able to kind of create the juice that I like to have. Um, and he can have the juice he likes to have. Okay, so let me pour these guys into this pot. And can you see this? I think we should have enough for two full servings. I love mixing apple with greens, partly because the flavor and also the um, greens don't have a super high yield really for anyone's, um, but just know that pure juicer has by far the best yield of any juicer out there and by as much of like 50% more than other juicers. So be very, very happy that you have this juicer. You will get all of um, all the enzymes, all of the juice from your greens. Uh, and then another great thing that we have been starting to do is starting to use the green pulp, um, putting it into things like soup. You can throw them into smoothies. Uh, so after you've kind of given your digestive uh, system a break, you can throw that great fiber, which feeds your microbiome. You can throw that into soups or throw it into smoothies um, or anything else that you want. Okay, so yeah, so this is about 12 ounces. So this was one full serving of juice. All right, so let me rinse off a couple of things. Chandra, are there any questions while well, I'm just gonna rinse off the grid tray? No. no more questions right now. Really? Okay. How am I doing so far? Chandra, am I answering questions? If you were a beginner juicer, would this be helpful or would this have been helpful? Yeah, I think my only thing that I would say is one thing for all the customers to do and for new people who are new to the juicing is to always just sort of give that juice tray a quick little wiggle before you send it up to just make sure it's placed properly. Um, that's my only suggestion. And I think David is unmuted. So David, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, actually that's a great, so we do see damage uh, to the juice tray. And what'll happen periodically is when you press the tray and the pulp pack will stick to the top of the juicer. And then when you drop the press, it'll, it'll fall back down sometimes like an inch. And when it does that, it's not always properly aligned. So what Chandra is recommending is make sure that the juice tray is fitting within the juice tray retainers on the press plate and that it's properly seated. And once you're familiar with the juicer and you know what that looks like, you'll be much more aware of it. But when you're first learning to use any machine, it takes a while to learn what to pay attention to because you're, the whole process is so big, you're not sure what to watch. So I, I guess what Chandra is saying in, in summary is uh, make sure the juice tray is always aligned and seated on the press plate, uh, probably for the first few weeks you're using the juicer as a best practice and learn to know what that looks like. Thanks you guys. Um, and, then, sure. and then Michelle Fulton just asked about OxyClean. We love OxyClean for cleaning uh, soaking the feed tube and soaking the cutter, it, it just, it lifts off any tannin buildup and is, it's super stuff. Yeah. And for people that are comfortable using bleach, bleach works very well too, especially when you're using turmeric. Um, I know it is not recommended for Gerson, so please don't use it for Gerson, but, um, but it, it, it does do a fantastic job of cleaning up any turmeric stains if you are juicing with turmeric. Um, okay, are we ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. So Jen, I just have one question. Have you ever tried grinding ginger without using a grid? I have, I have. Do you um, like it? Well, so if I owned a ginger brewing company, I would, because it's, it's amazing. But I don't have the issue that somebody that's juicing massive quantities of ginger and turmeric, I don't have the same issue. And I like the yield better with the grid. So I don't do it that way, but I think it's phenomenal. Um, I'm not gonna show them that way, but we can definitely refer them to the video that you've done where you run it through the grinder twice. Um, but I found that the yield is higher with the grid. It absolutely is. Okay, and that's what we love. We love that. So we're gonna do pineapple and we're going to do ginger. 
Um, ginger is very fibrous. It requires the number 10 grid. I mean, number 12 grid, number 12. Blah. And then pineapple is one of those fabulous fruits that we can just cut, wrap, and press. Um, how much time do I spend juicing on, uh, and then it got cut off. How much, how much time do you spend juicing on a daily basis? How much do you make in a day? So I don't always juice every day. Um, I mean, I'm lucky that I, I juice for a living too with, with work. Uh, but what I have found the best rhythm is to juice every three days, every two to three days. Um, it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to do that, um, especially if I just want to throw stuff into the dishwasher. Um, I juice massive quantities when I do that. That way I have enough to juice for everyone in my family. And I make sure that I have enough because everyone loves the juice so much that they end up drinking all of the juice that I plan for myself. So now I make a lot of juice because really the time required for a lot of juice is not a lot of extra time with the pure juicer. It's very, very fast um, and there's lots of ways around that. So I would say I juice every two to three days. Um, I have the kale and apple juice that I'm obsessed with right now. Um, I've been doing some lemons, which takes literally two minutes to just cut and press and I'll put that with hot water. Um, but yeah, I would suggest, you know, doing the juices that can last two to three days. If you're trying to just get into a good rhythm, just juice, even if it's twice a week and juice a ton of carrot apple or a ton of greens and make some juice cubes. Um, and, and also message us and we're on social media. Uh, we definitely want to help you in any way that we can to just kind of get you into that right rhythm because it's just like exercise. It's, um, it just takes some, it just takes getting a habit established. I do. Um, so I just saw the question about cabbage and cabbage. We've got red cabbage, green cabbage with broccoli and kale is a phenomenal juice. Um, so yeah, so know that you, you, you can juice. What can't you juice? So you can't juice sugar cane. Sugar cane, you could maybe once, but then you might not have a juicer that works anymore. What else can't you juice? Mangoes, things that are mushy. I mean, a banana, you don't want to juice a banana. Do not, uh, do not choose mustard greens. Don't do it. <laughs> maybe if you mix them with things. Sometimes oh. like so if you have wheatgrass, wheatgrass is good when you wrap it with a, a kale leaf. You can kind of push it through. But if you only want wheatgrass, you know, it's that's probably not. But you absolutely can. Another way is to freeze it, right, David? You freeze it. Anyway, I want to shift gears. I want to get back to task because we're at 310. And I want to make sure that would answer everybody's questions. All right, so I'm just gonna cut these into three pieces. I am going to move these out of the way. And this is great. So I'm gonna wrap one of these and the other I am going to leave on the cloth and we are going to press the ginger directly into, do you take yours? So you can or you don't have to take these off. So I've kind of been into a role where I've been taking them off. And the reason why I take them off isn't so much the flavor, but if you have a big pineapple, like we were saying before with pressing, that it might extend into where the juice flows and that can lead to some spilling on the backside. So this one, I just took the sides off and I'm gonna put it right underneath the grinder. And here we go. And then I've got this much ginger. So I would say I'm gonna probably just kind of back and forth, clean the grid tray off one time in between this. Um, again, this is very fibrous. We don't peel it. Uh, we just run it directly through. We've got the number 12 grid and it's going right directly onto the pineapple. Can you guys see that? Um, and this guy. And I'm gonna cover my hand where the feed tube is, just to make sure nothing pops up. As you can see, that does not take long. It smells amazing. Mm. 
And I just, I know this is a demo, but I just need to make sure I get every last drop of this, you guys. So here we go. We're gonna take this out of the lot that gets in there. Again, pop this off. You like a lot of ginger. That is a lot of ginger, Jen. I'm, this might be the most ginger I've ever done. So <laughs> these could turn into pineapple ginger shots instead of pineapple ginger juice. Or, or what I say is it becomes ginger pineapple juice at some point from pineapple yeah. ginger juice. If you, you're making ginger pineapple juice now. <laughs> well, more than anything, I just want to show everyone how to juice enough ginger like that. So yeah, this is probably more than you would ever need. But you can see that with the number 12 grid, it's very, very doable. It's very, yeah. very doable. So I... Yeah. Go Sorry, ahead. I interrupted. Yeah, I was about to say for most people, two to three inches of ginger would be for an entire uh, medium pineapple. Uh, two inches for a medium pineapple and three inches for a large pineapple would be what I would call a quote normal amount of ginger. I love that speed tray, the speed bowl. That's great the way you're using it. Isn't that great? Yeah. I mean, we're all busy. So yeah. I used to do it where I used the scoop all the time. But once I, once you have a good sense of what one and a half cups is, the world just opens up. All right, let's give this a press. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that everything is lined up correctly because this is very juicy. And very delicious. This I'm gonna slow it down. Everything is pressing. So you can see this over here is at risk. So I'm just gonna maybe move this over a little bit. All right. So I really slowed this one down. You can see how it's pushing over to the side and it's still okay. But if you go too fast, it will not be okay. And we're gonna press it a couple of different times. And what I'm gonna do, just so you guys know, is once this is done, I'm gonna pop this out. In fact, I can just pop it out now. When you're pressing a few different times, you can do this. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna keep the one with the ginger in here so you can see the ginger. Here's this pineapple. We're gonna fold these guys in half. And again, remember that diaper, you're gonna close this up nice and snug and you don't want any pieces folded over because you know what that means. And why not? Why don't we just get the other pineapple in here as well? All right. Any questions about that technique or any questions about juicing ginger or turmeric or anything else like that? We have a question. Jillian is actually showing us the juice she made. Show us your cute little jar. I love jars. I'm a jar. I'm a jar. Uh, Hold it up, Jillian, so I can see it. Yeah, it's so cute. Look, it's got oh, a little holder and it's pineapple, it's a grapefruit, and lime. Yes, it was so good. It's gilly. It's it was amazing. Jar, I I, it's okay. I made for my whole family. It was awesome. Oh, your kids, your kids drink it? Loved it. This is one left for my husband when he gets home. So oh, so great. I love, I love that. I, and I then love she, your white, your white lightning bottles. That's what we call that that ball jar it, one. Yeah. Delicious. It's so good. Thank you, Jen. You're doing so well. I'm learning so much. Oh, good. I'm so, so glad. Gilly, congratulations on that. I know that you just got your juicer. So I love, I mean, I say experiment with anything and everything. Cranberries are in season. All the greens are in season. I mean, there's just so much. So don't, don't let anything hold you back. And really the key is just to make sure you understand how to slow the press. You really have right. to slow the press and cover the feed tube. 
with that, you can do just about anything. Okay, what would I not juice? What are my least? I don't want to juice a mango really ever again. Um, tomatoes, you would have to be really, that one is going to have to require something very juicy with a wider strainer. What I found is the strainers like this are great for grapes. And this is probably going to be good for tomatoes as well. It's a little bit wider in the, 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 this is like a real strainer versus a fine strainer. I just find that more gets out and that way what you press is easier to press. I would use a liner with tomato. Um, I use a liner with cranberries and grapes, that combination that we've been doing. Um, but once you get the basics, you can juice just about anything. We also just did a great live um, where I juiced almond milk and we used a blender. And I found that that's just a, a really great way to, um, to make the milks, especially almond milk, cashew milk, um, is a little bit more mushy. Okay, so here's the juice that we just made. Now that Gilly said she put lime in there, it makes me wanna add lime. There's a lot of ginger in this. You can just see the ginger. Um, so, and one other tip too. So I am almost to the very tippy top. If I wanna store this for three days, I'm gonna add a little bit of water because I'm not gonna be able to taste the difference. And that way I've got very low oxidation. So there's a less likelihood of this getting oxidized the flavor stays amazing. Um, the enzymes stay intact. There's nothing in this jar that is gonna get in the way of delicious juice. Okay, are we ready for our last juice? Yes, all right. So I'm and Jen, while you're, Jen, while you're getting that ready, the other question was, um, when would you use the bag versus the cloth? You know, I, I think the bags are amazing. Um, I really love the bags, especially that's another great technique for speed juicing uh, because there's a lever on the feed tube that just allows you to hook the bag on there. Um, David loves to use the bag for citrus. It's great for greens. It's great for anything. So here's the thing that I, that I find is that I can clean the cloths easier. So I tend to go with the cloths mainly for that reason alone, um, but they're still very, very easy to clean. It's just that I store that I just kind of have a system. So let me show you over here where the bag kind of hooks up. And I think I have a couple of bags. I can even just demo using them. Let me get some water really quick too. Let me rinse this out. One of the things that I do when I'm using a bag versus a cloth is I um, think about how wet is that pulp going to be and will, how easy will it be to clean and do I need to use a liner? So like with celery and cucumber, I probably would have used a cloth and a liner because then I can just toss it and not have to clean. And then like, if you're just doing carrots and maybe carrots and apple, the bag, it, it's a very dry pulp. So I'll use a bag or something that's extremely dry because I can just open the bag and the pulp will just fall out versus me having to turn the bag inside out, wash it with cold water. So sometimes I do it based on um, the pulp texture. I'll show you, I'll, I can use the bag um, for this one around. Oh, yeah. So let's see what my tools are. Ginger. Okay, I'm going to use the number 10 grid for this. We're going to go on to the cranberry. No, not cranberry. We're going to do carrot, apple, beet. Um, and while I'm prepping for carrot, apple, beet, um, we can talk about a few things that we didn't get to demo today, um, but there are quite a few videos on our Instagram channel that show you how to do it. One in particular, just because berries are pretty much out of season now, or they're really expensive, is I'll buy frozen berries and you can grind them and put them into oatmeal. Um, so you can start to use the feed to the grinder as sort of just a really yummy way to make berry ice cream and to go after the organic frozen stuff. So it's a great way to still get the health benefits of berries without having to pay a crazy amount of money for them. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing, um, I don't know if she's here, but we have one new juicer that has just 
been doing a phenomenal job. She grinds her coffee now with the Pure Juicer. Um, she has done all kinds of cool stuff. So I actually want her, she's made nut butter. Nut butter is super easy cashews. You can just literally just put into the feed tube and it comes out the smoothest, most beautiful cashew nut butter. And if it doesn't come out perfectly smooth, you just run it through again and it definitely will. Um, but today we're gonna do carrot apple beets. So I wanna make sure we wrap up here on time. Definitely love to be on time. So I'm gonna say, let's say, let's grab six carrots. I've got two beets, maybe I'll do more than that. And then I'll grab, how many apples do I wanna grab? Two apples? We can do two apples because carrots are pretty sweet. So this, this is what we have, okay? Um, I'm going to do the speed juicing again too, unless Chandra, do you want me to show the, the one and a half cup scoop while I'm prepping? You can tell me what you want me to do. So again, you can either take the seeds out or not. We will take the stems off. Sometimes if I have three different recipes that I want to prep, I'll just take these trays and then I'll just load them up here and I'll just get everything ready. So all I have to do is just clean the feed tube and then I'll just run it through. But I did want to show everyone how I prepped because that was a question that came up. Um, so this, yeah, this is thin enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. It's going to be rich with feet, but I got two small ones. I bet they're going to be small and sweet and delicious. I could have even just done a whole one. Um, carrots are really easy. You just cut the ends off. And really, if you want, you only need to cut the big end off. And then we'll just push this all the way through. And again, these are ones where you want to push this carrot as far through the feed tube so that the pusher can do the rest. But don't try and use the pusher up above because that just, it just doesn't work very well. Okay, so we've got this. I'm gonna clean off the ginger. And I'll do it this way. This is, this is great. This is, I'm just gonna do more of the traditional way, okay? So we've got, we're gonna juice directly feed tube into the bowl. And from the bowl, I'm gonna use the one and a half cup scoop and I am going to um, put it into a cloth. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I just totally got myself wet, that's hilarious. Um, and then we'll put it into the press and then we'll drink. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna show you how I do this carrot. Pushed it pretty far down. Okay, so now we want to figure out how to do beets, right? So this is my trick. I like to put an apple in and then I'll put a beet in. This kind of keeps the grinder from shooting up, especially shooting up red beets. And it works great. And if you don't have that, you just want to do the beet. Just cover it, and that works great too. Do not be afraid to push hard, but there's sort of a sweet spot. So it's not like you're pushing so hard that you're trying to take down the juicer. You're just trying to move the, the produce through the cutter. So it's a little bit in between. sake of getting done on time guys I'm not going to clean the feed tube out but hopefully you've seen that demoed enough times I will kind of get the chopstick through here I'm going to show you how to measure up into this guy sorry I forgot that I was going to show you how to use the bag but there is a demo there's a live I believe 
um, where I show you how to use the bag. I can post that on social media. Um, and, and so you guys can see how I did that because it's, it's very, very easy to do. And it was pretty fun, it was pretty fun. But you're stuck with me and my little methods here. So now we've got the mash. I'm gonna take my one and a half cut, cut scoop and put it in here. And then I'm gonna fold it. And these, I can do a couple of them, right? We can do, let's try and do three of them because that'll be our grand finale. Two, again, I'm wrapping kind of snug so that it knows exactly where it's supposed to go and where it's not supposed to go. And let's do one more. That's about one and a half cups. Probably make it bigger, but I'm not going to. I'll just finish this up when we're, when we're done with our event. I'm gonna kind of push these down to get them all the way through, make sure. You can see. I'm really working on this finale for you guys. Let's hope it works. Let's hope I did this right. I always like to have a couple cloths around as well. It's kind of like art, art projects. It smells amazing. I'm gonna slow this press for sure today because this is a triple decker. And there you go. All right, so that pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted to show you guys today. Let me make sure I have everything else covered. Jen, you were amazing. You covered a lot of ground. You showed a lot of details and features, and I, we answered a lot of questions. I think it was really, really great. And you and you relaxed. You relaxed into it. You started off really fast, and then you slowed down and got into it. It was really nice. Well, like I said, this is our very first one. So thank you all for being um, the uh, inaugurating us into a whole new world and we hopefully it was helpful. Um, just remember there's a survey that's coming. So share with us what you liked, what you didn't like so that we can make sure that these are better. And um, let me see if there's anything that I didn't get to juice that you wanted to see me juice, let us know, share it on Instagram. We'll either show you a video that has it like the cabbage or we will do something for you and do an Instagram live where we show you how to do it. Um, definitely follow us on those social media channels if you haven't yet, because we're active on that every single day. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, Tom, Chandra, David, thank you everyone for helping us make this possible. And we are active on YouTube as well, um, not every day. So if you want to see us every day, then um, for right now, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok is really a great place to go to. Okay. Any last questions, Chandra? Do you have any last questions? Thank you. Um, we did have we did have a question about one um, one and one and a half cups of pulp equals how much juice? Say that again, Chandra. One and a half cups of pulp equals how much juice? Oh, one cup. Always use two thirds as your estimate. So if yeah. you do one and a half cup, the one and a half cup, which is one cloth would be how much juice? One cup. One cup, okay. Or, or and three pounds of produce will make two pounds of juice, which is really a quart. So it's a, as a general rule of thumb, you will, for every three pounds of produce, you'll get one quart of juice. Okay. So and then um, the other question is, does anybody have like a mat that they use at the bottom of their juicer or on their countertop to protect from stains? I can show you what I have. So 
So I had this when I got started. This is just a plastic mat that you can get on Amazon or anywhere else. Um, what I found is, is getting the lift kit is better because the lift kit allows you to get underneath the juicer and clean it really well. Um, and I actually don't ever use this anymore. So um, sometimes I used it on the back as well, just especially as I was getting started because I had this stuff, the juice that would come out the back. But I don't really use them anymore. But if, if you like them, I mean, these are great and they're super thin and they're super easy to use. Um, and then there is, let's see, where are we the most active on for live demos or videos? Instagram for sure. Instagram. Okay. Instagram. And let's see what else we have here. Um, somebody's asking about cleaning the bags and the cloth. Can they put them in the dishwasher and then store them? I am going to post our blog on cloth cleaning. Hang on just a sec. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to clean all of these, but basically all the parts I'll just take off, rinse, and I can wash or I can just throw them to the dishwasher. I may celebrate a great Zoom and just throw it in the, into the dishwasher today and just rinse it off. And then I'll spray down the, the, the machine itself. And then I did wash the cloths earlier. Um, we do have a couple of great demos too on Instagram on how to wash those, but just using a brush and just scrubbing through. If you don't have a brush, anything that kind of scrubs through works great. Um, and the key is just to maybe let them dry for just even 10 minutes and then throw them into the freezer. Here, and I'm about to post the link on cleaning. Great. So the answer is no, do not put them in the dishwasher. I would not, although somebody showed me there's these adorable, cute little mini dishwashers that are like $200 and I don't know, maybe that'll work, but no, I would not put them in the dishwasher. You can put them in the laundry, just don't put them in with other clothes. The okay, reason- David yeah, and the reason to, oh, oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I posted, I, I posted more than I needed to. Please ignore all that. I was a work document. And let me post just the link. And then the answer on freezing is that freezing slows down any bacterial growth so that if you've, um, when you when you use your cloth, there's a small possibility that you know that something could grow, and so by rinsing it and pressing it out and freezing it, you're putting it in the freezer, and that's the best way to prevent to keep them sanitary. Is really the answer to that. That's the reason. Great. And um, on the Amazon for that plastic mat, what did you type in? Do you remember what you called it? Um, I don't, but maybe when we send, we're gonna send an email just to follow up with everybody and I'll try, I'll find it and then I'll, I'll send it to you. It's been a couple of years. So uh, I don't remember what, what I typed it under, so. Okay. But yeah, we'll send an email. We'll send an email and um, with the recording for anyone who, you know, wasn't able to be here for the whole time or missed it. Or if you just want to go back and see a certain section of what we did, we'll have it. Great. Thank you yeah. so much. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. How will you send the survey? Which email address will you send the survey? Oh, thank you. Hello? Thank you so much.